Hello there. In this video, I will give you a walkthrough of RHS controls or right hand side controls in AirMate in the conference format. Let's get started. Whenever you enter the event, you will see the controls at the top right. These are the RHS controls. Now, let us understand what they are and how to set them up. The first control that we see here is the leaderboard. The leaderboard is the gamification feature wherein the participants can take part in various activities inside the event and earn points. The participants can see their ranks out here. They can also click on it and see the points allocated to that certain activity. One can also see the type of activities and the points allocated to that certain activities by clicking on earn points and see all of it. As the event organizer, you can enable this leaderboard by going to your event dashboard. And under here, you can select the setup leaderboard option and enable your leaderboard. Now, this leaderboard can only be enabled before your event opens or starts. If your event is opened or has started, you cannot enable it from your dashboard. You can also allocate the points by clicking on this edit and allocate the points that you want to allocate for the activities. Once done, save it. Now, as the event organizer, if you would like to present the awards for the winners, then you can do so by enabling the same here. And from there, you can click on edit and edit the prices. You can simply click on the pencil icon. And from there, you can rewrite the name of the winner. You can also add what price you are giving to the winner. And if you have any sponsor, then you can also add the sponsor to the price. You can only add the sponsor to the card if you have added the sponsor to your event. Now, whatever changes you have put up here will be shown out here. And once done, you can save it. The organizers, if they want to use the fresh leaderboard, then they can also reset the leaderboard ranks out here by clicking on reset. And when the reset is done, the winners will be announced on the screen. Now this leaderboard will start from the scratch. This function is helpful when the organizers wants to use the leaderboard for different sessions or different day events. They can also see their leaderboard history by clicking on history and see it from here. Leaderboard is a perfect feature if you would like to incentivize the attendees to participate in various activities inside the event. Now coming on to the second control that is my schedule, simply click on it. And inside my schedule, you can schedule meetings with other event participants. You can simply click on schedule meeting. You can write the title of the meeting. You can set the date of the meeting by clicking on this calendar icon. You can set up the meeting start time and the duration. The maximum duration you can have is 60 minutes and the minimum duration you can have is 5 minutes. Please do mind that the meeting date and the start time of the meeting has to be inside the event timing. Now, if you would like to add a people to your meeting, then simply click on add people and select the people that you want to add and then add them and send the invitation. The meeting invitation has been sent. Now the people who are invited will have the option to either attend your meeting or reject the invitation. The invited people will get the notification about the meeting few minutes before the event starts. They can simply click on join button to join the meeting. Now you can schedule as many meetings as you want by clicking on schedule meeting, but it has to be inside the duration of the event. If you do not want to be added to any meetings, then you can also disable the same by toggling this button up. The next control is moderation. All the reported chats or the questions during the event will be shown under the moderation section. As the event host or the organizer, you have the choice to remove the post. You can also block the user who has written this message in case of abusive messages. The blocked user will not be able to participate in any activities inside the event. All they can do is watch the live videos. Now, let's say that this chat is reported by mistake. For that, you can simply click on the three dot icon and click on ignore to ignore the report. Now, if you go to the actions taken side, you will see what actions that you have taken for the reported chats or reported questions. Now, coming on to the feed, feed is the common chat section wherein all the event participants, irrespective of the sessions that they are attending to, can chat with others inside the event. Inside the event feed itself, you will also see the event level polls. As the event organizer or the host, you can create a new poll by clicking on here. Now you can put up the poll questions and the poll answers. You can add up to six answers by clicking on add answers. Now if you would like to make these answers as multiple choice, then you can check this box and make them multiple type answers or uncheck it to keep it single type. You can also control who can see the poll results. You can show the poll results instantly. You can show the poll results only after the poll has ended or don't show the poll results to the attendee at all. 
And once done, you can either save this poll as a draft by clicking on Save Draft or Publish It. This poll will be visible to all the event attendees, irrespective of the sessions they are attending to. Now, if you would like to delete this poll, you can also do so by clicking on this Bing icon. Coming on to the People section, here you will see all the people who are inside this event. You can also search them by names or view them in different view. During the live event, if there are other people, you can also directly message them. You can schedule a meeting with them or click on the three dot icon and block the user if needed. Now coming on to the messages section, all the direct messages that you have got or sent to others will be shown out here. You can simply click on this message and reply to the message. Now, if you would like to see the profile of this person who has sent you the message, then you can do so by clicking on this view profile. Or if you would like to hide the profile, you can simply click on here and click on hide profile. If needed, you can also click on this three dot icon and block the conversation with this person. Now coming on to alerts. As the event organizer, you can create a text notification or live announcements. To create a text notification, simply click on create notification and then you can write in your announcement. Now, if you would like to add an action, you can also click on add an action and see where you want your attendees to go to. I want them to go to booth, so I've selected booth. Now you can also see the preview of this announcement by clicking on show preview. And this is how it will look like to the attendees. Once then, you can go ahead and send it out. You can create a live announcement by clicking on create a live announcement. Click on proceed to set up. And from here, click on check audio video to set up your audio video. And click on start live announcement. And from here, you can give out the announcements. You can also enable your camera and video. You can also share your screen. In case of audio or mic issues, or if you want to set up the virtual background, then you can click on this settings icon. And from here, you can select the camera of your choice. You can also select the background of your choice. If you would like to remove the background, then you can click on here. If you would like to add a blur, then you can click on here. Or if you have your own background image that you would like to upload and use, then you can do so by clicking on here. Coming onto the microphone, you can also select the microphone of your choice. You can also test the microphone by clicking on this button. Same with the speaker, you can select the speaker and test the speaker. Once done, you can go ahead and save it. It will show that you are live and all the people inside the event can see you. If you would like to minimize the screen, then you can do so by clicking on here. While the screen is minimized, you can also drag and drop it anywhere inside the screen. And now to maximize it, you can simply click on this maximize icon again. And once you are done sending out your announcement, then you can click on this and live announcement to end this announcement. Now, coming on to the settings, if you click on here, you will see customize event, update profile, audio video settings, dashboard, language, and blogger. Let us understand how to customize the event and what does it mean. Simply click on it. Under the customize event, you can customize the event by the theme or the color. You can customize your theme by selecting the color of your choice. And as you can see, there are changes in the theme of the event. You can also choose your own color by clicking on here and select the color from the scales. Or if you have a hex code that you want to use, then you can put it out here and use the same as well. Once done, you can click on the stick icon and you're good to go. Now you can also change the ambience of the event. It is on ambience by default. You can select the light ambience by clicking on it or go back to dark ambience. You can also edit the event experience. During the event, you can also turn on or turn off all these event features. You can also rename the navigation labels. That is this labels by clicking on the pencil icon, rewriting the labels, click on enter, and you will see the changes out here. Earlier we had this as a reception, now it is changed to home. Same with the schedule on and boots. Now coming on to the session experience. During the session you have following features. You can turn them on or off as per the requirement. You also have the option to clear some of the features out here and even in the event experience. If you clear the data from these features, then you may also not find those data in the analytics. Once done, you can go ahead and save it. Now coming on to the update profile, simply click on it and view your profile. Now click on complete profile if you want to complete the profile and put up all your information. You can also write a little introduction about yourself. You can also add interest by clicking on here and select the type of interest that you're interested in. You can select up to five interests and once done, you can click on done. The interest that you have added here will reflect on the profile. You can connect your network with others who has the same interest inside the event. You can also add external links or social links that is LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or website if you have any. Simply click on it and plug in the URL. As you can see, the LinkedIn CTA button has appeared up here. 
Whenever people come to your profile, then they can simply click on this icon and they will be led to your LinkedIn page. You can do same with the Twitter, Facebook and others. You can also upload a profile picture by clicking on upload image and upload your image from there. Once done, you can go ahead and save it. Now coming on to the audio and video settings. If you have any audio or video issues, then you can click on here and set up your audio and video. Coming on to the dashboard. Let's say you have closed the community dashboard tab, which is this by mistake. And if you would like to access this dashboard without a hassle, then you can simply click on dashboard and you can get out there. Now coming on to the language, you can change the text language of this event into the language of your choice and save it. And now as you can see, some of the texts are changed into the language of your choice. And this change will only reflect on you and not on anyone else. Now coming on to the last part that is log out. If you would like to log out of the event once done, you can do so by clicking on here. Well, that's all about the event level RHS controls in AirMeet. Hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.